There we go. Matches exactly what we want. And now we can actually set up the logic. So in here, what we do is in our blueprint, you can actually go to add and then search for sequence. And you'll see that we have this one called actor sequence. So this is actually part of a plugin, which is an actor sequence plugin, which is experimental, uh, being over this in the long version. So it is enabled by default. You don't have to go in there and do this. It will just be on in 5.4 at least, 5.5 and 5.4, I believe. So we can set that up. Once you've done that, you can go to add components and do actor sequence. And then in here, we actually have what we need. So it opens up a sequence tab. You might not see that, but with the sequence selected, you can do sequence open tab. You can see we've got a bunch of options on the right hand side. We don't need to touch any of those. We're not looping any animations or auto playing it. We're gonna tell it specifically when to do that. So now with that done, what we can do is we can go to our viewport and then the owner, we can actually plus, and you can see here we've got our components list, and this components list matches what we have on our main model door. So I'm gonna start off with the center, and what I'm gonna do is make sure that that center component is a child of one side of this door. So when it opens, it's attached to it, and it moves with it. We don't have to animate it separately. So I'm gonna select the center, and I'm just gonna choose this on door one. So now if I move this door, you can see that it automatically parents and attaches it for us. So all we're gonna do now is select the door center and we're gonna say, get our door center component. We're gonna add our transform. So we can do transform and then we will set a start keyframe, which we can do with this little plus triangle or square here, diamond, whatever it is. We can do transform and then we could actually select it. And in this case, I'm gonna rotate it around our X, Y, Y axis. I always get this wrong, even on my little test. So yeah, there we go, pitch. So we're gonna animate the pitch. We've got that at zero. We're gonna move our time forward. So it's gonna take two seconds. We're gonna rotate this around and we'll do it one and a half. So 448 and 450. There we go, 450, we'll animate it that way. So now if we play through the scrubber, so we can scrub through the timeline. We can see that it rotates and then we're gonna open the doors. So now we can do the door, select the door, plus, and then we do door model, and then door model one. So we have both of those. And we can do a transform, and you can see that by selecting them, we can do it on both. And now we can actually animate in here as well. So if I do a keyframe on both of these to say, okay, this is the starting frame. So we, we do our rotation, we then play, and now we're gonna take another two seconds to open the door. We can actually select the doors in here and we can just use the snap and then move these forward or across and then we can hit the plus as it is. And what we should get is if it's done it properly, didn't do which one is this one. Didn't like it for some reason. So let's do them just one at a time. It is in beta, so it's a little bit experimental. So let's just do one at a time. You and then you both know they're gonna be in the same place. So four seconds, and then we can animate. I need to figure out which one I've got. Select the door model one. So the bottom one, animate this over by two, and then we can keyframe. And then we're gonna do this the same thing over by two meters and keyframe. There we go. So now we've got our little animation that plays and it opens up. We're gonna move this down to the keyframe. So the length of the video is, or the animation is only four seconds long, which would be cool. And we don't actually have to do a reverse animation. We can do that through the code. So when we get close to it. So I'm gonna put this timeline at the beginning. So we just got it in the scene. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my default scene route and we're gonna add a collision. So a box collision and we'll scale this up. And this is what's gonna detect whether the player is in range. If they are, play the animation. And then we can animate through that. So we can play it like so, which will be fine. So event graph, uh, double check that we've got it positioned, yeah, that will work nicely. So when we overlap this collision box, we're gonna play the animation. So on, comp on component begin overlap, we can select this. We can drag in our actor sequence, and then we can do play. I'm gonna show you how to play the sequence first, and then we'll look at reversing it. So we can do play. We're not gonna check against for the player, although if you want to, what you could do is, in our case, our player is a character, I think it's a character or a pawn, which is, uh, let me double check inside of here. So yeah, we've got character. 
So in some tutorials, you'll see that they do a cast to character, cast a character class. So first person character would be the one for first person character, but you don't actually have to do this. What you do is other actor, you could do equal, and then you say get character. So get player character. So now if the character class, so if anything of a character class is walking into this, then it will open the door. So it would work for AI as well. And we set press play. So now if I go into the project, I might have to change the order of the door. Let's double check animation. I'm not too sure why it keeps going red. I haven't figured that part out yet, but should be able to do compile, figure out why these are in the wrong locations. It needs to be a little bit buggy, so I'm just resetting the transforms here. There we go. Make sure we do that on all of them. 200 up is fine. And then now we should be able to go up to it. And then we overlap it. We see the animation plays and then it actually opens our door, which we can go through. The problem is it doesn't close once we leave. So to close the door, instead of duplicating our animation and then creating multiple ones, just to open, open and close it, handle that stuff, we can actually take our actor sequence and we can change the play rate. So if you remember, we've got this play rate section here. If we set this to minus one, it'll play it in reverse for us. So what we do is we can drag off and we do get sequence player. Then we drag off this now and we do set play rate, set play rate. And on the top one, when we overlap the box, we want to make sure it sets it to one. So it plays forward. And then we need to do it on reverse as well. So in the box, when we end overlap, so when we're nowhere near the door or we've left the radius, what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of this logic, paste it right down to the bottom, plug it back in like so, and we're going to change this play rate to minus one. So minus one, compile and save, save all. And now when we press play, we can pick up a gun, we can go up to the door, it's going to rotate the door, play the animation for us, and then when we leave it, you'll see that it actually plays in reverse, and then we can do it that way. And if we run up to it, I can't actually walk through the door, but as soon as it opens up, we can actually go through and then we shoot it and everything else that we want to do. And it will play for us. Should do, ooh, what's happening there? Let's have a look, see what's going on. There it one, animation sequence, get character. It should play fine, print string B. But like it is, there's a couple of bugs. So it's figuring out whether the bug is something that I've done or what. So we open it, close, open, and then close. Cool. So I'm not too sure what the little bug was for stopping the door from opening and closing there, but we could take that and then we could say, okay, take material, we'll name it. We're just going to give this a solid color, base color. That's fine. Roughness, hue, metallic, one. Actually, we'll do 0.8 metallic, too bad, actually. Oh, it didn't change that one. 0.2. There we go. Apply. We'll just bring the new material onto all of those parts we want. Gonna be a bit shiny. That's way too shiny. Did you not change? There we go. There we go. Not too worried about making it look all pretty, but you get the gist. You can actually now animate inside of it. And then if we want this goal to be used again, different places, we could simply select that blueprint. We could hook it up so we could rotate it around. Let's do this on minus 90. Like we could put it in here, scale it up a little bit if we want to. And then now if we go to this door, it's gonna open and then it will close as well. And then this one does the same thing. A little bit wobble because I've stretched it, but you can see how we can actually use this to make reusable doors. I don't know whether it's carried away now. How long have we going for? 26 minutes. All right, let's do a little bit more. Let's do a button. So blueprint class, Act actually we'll leave that for now. That'll probably be its own little video, which we can take a look at next. I'll split this up actually, and we'll save that out just there. So yeah, so that's how to basically use Blender to model a little bit of a door. If you watch the full version over on YouTube and our YouTube members and Patreon members. So if you want to see that, the full process, head over to there. Thank you to everybody on Patreon and YouTube, but this is how to set up actor sequences inside of basically an actor and then use it to animate and do complex things. You can do whatever you want with it. It's super cool. I've been waiting a long time for a feature like this. Um, it makes my life as a, an e-learning guy to make things easier and much quicker. So if you guys enjoyed this new format over on YouTube and Patreon, let me know. Big thank you to everyone. Files will also be available for you to download if you want to check it out over there. All right, bye.